Thank you very much. <laughs> so I will be talking to you about narrative on edge in the Belgian graphic novel. The Be Belgian graphic novel is something new that I'm trying to argue exists. So <laughs> it's uh, it's um, um, a new thing today. But in this paper, I mainly intend to investigate uh, narrative liminality in a corpus of five Belgian and therefore Walloon and Flemish and Francophone and Dutch speaking graphic novels. Um, with Dominique Goblet and Kai Pfeiffer's Plus si Entente, more if it clicks in English and it's translated, so you can uh, read it if you like, or in French. Um, and Adolfo Avril and Olivier Depres' Après la mort, après la vie, I discuss two books published by Frémoc and which are accordingly decidedly of the alternative variety. And the Dutch language part of the corpus is slightly more mainstream with uh, Gerolf van der Perre and Johanna Spijs, who will move stop, Wounded City. Um, an O scenario by the Paulette brothers. And also they to Sam and us two together uh, in English by Ephameron. So as is clear from the description, the works in question are all collaborative texts. And this is a factor which it will be interesting to connect to our exploration. The paper focuses on the way in which these graphic novels challenge the boundaries of narrative, especially in terms of segmentivity, uh, tabularity, and uh, metalepsis. This allows us to explore the opportunities for the combination of narrative logic, lyric logic, and the logic of the visual arts in the graphic novel medium and the Belgian graphic novel in particular. As part of the uh, Walloon and Flemish graphic novels, which combine into the Belgian graphic novel uh, with a number of shared characteristics, the books under scrutiny are highly visual, tabular, and they share a lyric uh, character. These books are also in accordance with the Belgian uh, graphic novel's tendency towards the metaleptic. In order to address the question of the lyric, we will turn to the notion of segmentivity, conceived of by Rachel Blau du Plessis, and unfortunately I don't have the quote here, but um, uh, Rachel Blau du Plessis conceives of segmentivity as the ability to articulate and make meaning by selecting, deploying, and combining segments, and she identifies it as the core characteristic of uh, poetry. Um, the effect of tabular meaning making on narrativity in our corpus will be approached with the help of Pierre Frenot de Ruel's uh, conception of tabularity as meaning making through the arrangement of panels on a page, and it's thus a spatial and compositional principle as opposed to s sequential linear leaning, uh, meaning making. This is uh, the way in which the, page, uh, the panels that are arranged on the page actually um, provide uh, a possibility to make meaning for readers without this sequential linear um, structure. Uh, and metalepsis in turn is treated in the sense of a paradoxical contamination between the world of the telling and the world of the told. In this uh, paper, narrativity itself <laughs> is seen as eventfulness, which proposes, uh, presupposes a form of change, either a mere change of state or a succession of such changes, or within the context of a plot, some surprising point, some significant departure from the established course of incidence. Because of the homogeneous nature of our corpus, uh, this paper can also be considered an inquiry into the specificity of the Belgian graphic novel. Since Belgian culture, certainly today, is most often subdivided into French-speaking uh, culture and Dutch-speaking Flemish culture, and therefore the idea of a Flemish and a Walloon graphic novel, this idea of the Belgian graphic novel has not yet been awarded much attention, but you can see a lot of uh, uh, similarities between those two, so I think that's interesting as well. Uh, segmentivity and concomitantly poeticness is likely the most striking quality through which uh, the graphic novels presented feel out the boundaries of narrative. Uh, in Plus uh, the alternation of a highly segmentative and tabular storyline and next to that a coherent, sequential, linear, more traditional storyline renders, uh, renders this notion of narrative liminality very manifest. And together these two narrative lines tell the tale of um, the life and online dating adventures 
of a woman protagonist called La Mère. And the limit of the story is uh, chromatically and stylistically thematized, with the first uh, narrative line being noticeably more colorful, stylistically diverse, um, than the visually uniform traditional beige and gray linear narrative. Um, in the book, the verbal is strikingly more dominant in the second storyline than in the first, which can be seen as a confirmation of the conventionality of the, the association of narrative, of course, and then uh, the verbal uh, medium, the word. The linear storyline is also connected to the technology of the comics medium. We see a lot of word balloons, a lot of captions, a lot of frames, uh, panels, and so forth and so on. And um, uh, this in contrast to the second line, which stands out in its intermediality. The wordlessness of art, the panel internal markings of the online dating advertisements to which the book refers, and of course, the segmentative meaning making of, of poetry, a form of literature, of course, instead of the sequentiality of the frame. So intermediality, and then um, wordlessness, and so forth, and so on. That's all kind of part of this um, uh, much less narrative uh, line. Um, the first storyline very explicitly thematizes the way in which the graphic novel medium explores the technology of comics in the construction of its own identity, a question that is of particular significance in the metamedial Walloon and Flemish and Belgian graphic novel, an intertextual comics collage, and I think I, I'm almost at the first image. <laughs> um, an intertextual uh, comics caption collage and, and therefore a cut up comic book is, uh, is there in one panel, which we will discuss uh, in what follows and constitutes a particularly direct example of this idea that um, the liminal nar narrative way of making meaning, meaning in comics is associated with comics and especially graphic novels kind of trying to figure out what their identity, their medial identity is now and uh, how they relate to comics, to other media, and, and so on. The idea of the identity of the graphic novel in its differentiation of comics, the cut-up comics book, um, or comic book, as tied to the notion of narrative and narrative technology manifests much less clearly in the French and American graphic novel in which the differentiation in question is sooner a question of um, content, theme, non-fantastical, non-adventurous, autobiographical, and so on. Um, narrative liminality, uh, often in uh, connection to art and poetry, is then unsurprisingly a topic that frequently occurs in Belgian graphic novels who are trying to figure out who they are, what they are, uh, with regard to other media right now. Um, so as our comparison of both storylines indicates, segmentivity is often contrasted to narrativity as a form of sequence, and the boundary of narrative appears to be connected to the interaction between these notions in this case. The story in the first and primary sequence certainly is characterized by a form of gapedness, which renders an easy sequential appreciation of the uniform four panel pages. And that's the cut up comic book there that you see. So the four panel pages, uh, it renders a sequential appreciation um, difficult. This segmentivity manifests to various degrees in the book, certain pages are much less segmented than others, which approach the sequential logic of the second um, uh, storyline clearly situated with narrative. This variety allows for a productive understanding of the question where narrative begins and ends. Wordless pages or pages with little words are generally more gapped than others, a general characteristic of word and image narrative, I believe. The stylistic and technical variety of the first storyline greatly adds to this uh, effect of segmentivity, as you can see here. Um, this first line contains panels in surrealism affiliated brut styles, but also more elegant uh, figurative and realist styles, for example. These are rendered via a number of technologies, amongst which expressively used felt tip pen stands out. Collage, however, is also a market means via which the gap story is delivered. 
One, one scene shows how vintage black and white captions from traditional romance comics are intermingled to a segmentative sampling effect inside the panel. On the same page, the vintage black and white aesthetics, uh, aesthetic of, co of the comics is gradually abandoned until the final panel shows a colorful, expressive style. So uh, here you can see how the uh, book tri works with the liminal narrativity and the um, variation of styles, uh, the cutting up of, of the comics, and so on. Um, in Plus si Entente, as well as the other graphic novels in our corpus, the narrative, uh, the non-narrative signifying potential of page composition, captured in uh, uh, Pierre Frenot de Ruel's concept of tabularity, which contrasts with the narrative idea of linearity, generally takes on an important role. The hyper-conventionality of the four-panel uh, frame used throughout almost the entire book um, its invariability is sometimes alternated by splash, splash page, pages, but most of the book is actually just these four panels, like that, and then it goes on like that. Um, it foregrounds the compositional meaning making of the page. It allows great focus on the way in which images are arranged and communicate. The stabularity accompanies the segmentivity of plus entente, to create, create, <laughs> create a narrative uh, relying more on poetic, uh, fragmented association than on sequential storytelling. Um, narrative liminality is also a question of metalepsis. Uh, as I've argued, this idea of the paradoxical contamination between the world of the telling and the world uh, of the told, and in plus si entente, this occurs, for example, when the storytelling and the story world, the idea of the inventiveness of the story itself, are thematized in the book and the main character and her admirers play a game with a story invented in a so-called generative matrix. So this uh, uh, metaleptic sort of narrative liminality also helps in um, um, trying to yeah, kind of think, reflect uh, about the, the medial aspect of the book, self-reflect actually on the medial status of the book. Um, that's also a way in which narrative liminality is then uh, used to do that. Um, the book's outro, in turn, paratextually features a page-wide photograph of a house that matches La Mers, the protagonist, residence in the drawn story, suggesting that the sometimes outrageous and surreal narrative of Plus Entente, as I think is clear from the example, um, is tightly connected to the world of the telling, one of the medium-specific qualities of photography, which is associated with uh, referentiality, immediacy, a term by Marshall McLuhan, which des designates the absence of, of mediation dynamics, is in effect here. Um, the graphic novel's autobiographic media, media genius, media genie, which is a strong chemistry between a medium and a kind of story or genre, according to Philippe Marion, um, a comics uh, and media scholar. And uh, the author, or one of the author, because it, well, authors, because it's a collaborative work, uh, history as an autobiographical graphic novelist, of course, also kind of contribute to this um, immediacy, this effect of immediacy. In Gewon de Stad, which is the next book, uh, which is often called uh, a graphic poem, so kind of leaves this narrative domain a little bit more, um, yeah, more clearly. Uh, the combination of narrative and poetry is even more pronounced than in Plus si Entente. In Van de Pere and Spy's graphic novel, oh, where is, ah, here you, okay. Um, which retells the story of the burning of Leuven during the First World War. It is the selecting, deploying, and combining of images and historical posters. Uh, in response to segments of text and pauses of uh, wide text space and uh, segmentivity that shapes the meaning of the story. Uh, the book is marked by a very relative eventfulness and thereby narrativity, and also, as with the segmentative story in Plus si Entente, the absence of the technology of the comics medium. So as you can see, word balloons, captions, multi-frame, none of it is here. 
In Gewoon de Stad, narrativity is a function of textual and especially verbal sequence at a page rhythm. The verbal texts, which uh, most obviously communicate the narrative, are contained in the wide spaces that are crucial to the segmentative and poetic workings of the word image text as pauses or gaps. As such, they manifest the line between narrative and poetry, poetry which literally runs through the book uh, containing this generic character. In this graphic novel too, high segmentivity is accompanied by high tabularity. As you can see, the compositional aspect of the page is absolutely foregrounded here. Um, with the architectural layout of the pages skirting the border of narrative and non-narrative mediation. Gewon de Stad foregrounds the metaleptic boundary between the world of the telling and the world of the told through the insertion of historical wall posters into the fictional text. These bills were used in World War I to communicate with the inhabitants of the city when other means of communication were unavailable. In their eventful focus, a reaction to the famous accusations of barbarianism in Leuven, for example, the posters provide the war with a narrative overtone. As we have seen that an event told is one of the constitutive uh, features of narrativity, and indeed uh, such posters are used to reconstruct the so-called war narrative. Given their specificity as communicative wall posters, this narrativity um, is always a liminal narrativity in touch with the world of the telling. And so the in integration of these posters, oh my god. Uh, <laughs> uh, the integration of these posters, um, in that case, I may just uh, skip one book, I think. I will show it to you. And you can see how uh, the poetic aspect is uh, in play here. Um, and then I'll, I'll go to my next book. Um, Après la mort, après la vie is this book. Um, it's a book by Olivier, uh, Adolfo Avril and Olivier, D oh no, I'll, I'll skip maybe two then, if I have three minutes left. This is the um, uh, final book. And um, this one was a very filmic graphic novel, which I thought interesting as well. But uh, this one is the, the final book. Um, it's the final graphic novel. Um, and it's all, it also intermediately, intermediately involves film. And it operates segmentivity and a form of poeticness in the architecture of the story through the combination of its various uh, chapters. In the case of the highly postmodern au scenario, or au scenario, however, it is not the segmentedness of the portions of the narrative, but their overwhelming metaleptic nature that assures the narrative liminality of the book. Metalepsis, as we've seen, the idea of the contamination between the world of the telling and the world of the told. Um, this metalepticness is greatly assisted by the intermediality in and of the graphic novel. Uh, the reference to film and scenario writing, as suggested by the title of the book, certainly stimulates the metaleptic effect. The, the, the way in which everything was made um, is very much foregrounded and allows readers to easily access the world of the, of the telling, so to speak, as opposed to um, just reading the book as something that's told um, to them. Um, now, the end of the story is meta-reflectively uh, discussed by the characters through the integration of an iconic uh, Flemish comic book end scene, a waffle feast. Um, there is also an intermedial reference to spectacle, film, and theater. Um, and all of these things contribute to, <laughs> I'm trying to wrap up here, to um, the way in which uh, the, um, the narrative liminality works in, uh, in this book. Um, okay. Right, um, in this book there's an, an, an example of a so-called vertical metalepsis. So the distinction between story and storytelling, but there is also horizontal 
there are many horizontal uh, transgressions of the frontiers between stories. And both of them uh, are here, um, work in this book. And uh, um, each chapter is, for example, introduced through an image, most often a figure such as Kafka, Duchamp, a wolf. Underneath these images, a signif significant phrase each time completes the iconic effect. And um, these uh, title pages um, sort of allow this horizontal uh, metalepsis between um, the various, uh, the various uh, intertextual references um, in the book. Um, and the cover of the book uh, further confirms and signals the liminalization of the story as it features an image and uh, a caption, the components out of which the panels in the story on the inside are made up. Um, in the place of a paratextual experience with a title, authorial indicator, and so on. Um, and here what is normally on the inside of the book in the, place of this is, uh, in the place of the story is also on the outside, which obviously blurs the boundaries between the story world and um, the reality, the world of the telling, if you want. Um, now, uh, I will wrap up. Uh, narrative liminality presents thus as a form of ambiguity, and I think that that's something that um, um, is clear from what I've uh, told you. In most of the works discussed, um, challenging notions such as linearity, such as sequen sequentiality, and this challenge is generally achieved in comics, um, or is very strongly tied to this tabular storytelling. So uh, using or activating the page as a compositional uh, opportunity, a spatial compositional op opportunity. Um, um, and that's a quality that is very, very obvious in this Belgian graphic novel. Um, and it's strongly connected to the graphic novel in general. Now, tabularity in conjunction with the graphic novel's word image hybridity also promotes narrative liminality through its uh, stimulation of uh, segmentivity, as we've seen. The poetic effect, <laughs> which this creates in combination with the intrinsic narrativity of the graphic novel medium, renders it particularly suited to exploring narrative boundaries. Tabularity's promotion of visual signification in the graphic novel also promotes questions regarding narrative uh, logic in its uh, confrontation with visual logic. This combination of narrative logic, lyric logic, and the logic of the visual arts is joined by the metaleptic foregrounding of narrative liminality in all of our cases. So all of these notions that I've introduced in the beginning, metalepsis, uh, segmentivity, tabularity. I think that it's clear from what I've told you that these effectively are very strongly tied to narrative liminality in the graphic novel, in the Belgian graphic novel at least. Um, now, and this is I found interesting as well, the prevalence of this principle in these texts can also be related to their collaborativeness. They're all collaborative texts. Um, as this quality, this collaborative quality, removes the stories in question from a single creative imagination which may easily be connected to a story world. So collaborativeness may then be considered a stimulating factor for narrative liminality. And narrative liminality can further be considered a means for the Belgian graphic novel uh, to differentiate itself uh, from the more traditionally narrative Flemish and Walloon uh, comic books and masters such as Hergé, as well as in effect, as I've explained, the more narratively oriented international uh, graphic novel. Its skirting of the borders of narrative is striking when compared to the French and American graphic novel, which uh, do dominate the graphic novel medium. And uh, that is uh, the remark that uh, I wanted to end with. So thank you very much for your attention.